is the only animal <laughs> that we know of that produces huge poo. You're very excited. Oh, look you? at that. Yesterday, we're dealing with one of my favourite substances in the natural world. I thought you'd like this one. We're talking about poo, animal poo. And I have a collection of animal poo, so I thought I'd test Meg's with a few of those items. That I makes thought sense. I could smell something yeah, that's coming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're all okay. from the UK. Okay. And in fact, I collected these in the garden. So I didn't go very far to get these. They're mm -hmm. small, relatively round pellets. Let's see if I can hold it up to the camera, see if we can get that there. Let's have a look. Yes, look at that. Now, normally they're deposited in piles of about eight or ten. Okay. Well, based on their size, they're a small mammal. Mm -hmm. Based on what I know we have in the garden, mm -hmm. they're grey squirrel. They are grey squirrel. One out of one. Yes. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Good check grey squirrel. I don't consider myself to be a fecal connoisseur <laughs> like you, but now, you know. What about these? Have a whiff first. Oh, that's what I could smell. Oh, they are on. stinky. This is nice stuff, isn't it? Let's have a look at that there. Yes. Look at that. Beautiful. It's very smelly stuff. Based on the volume yeah. of the poo. Yeah, the volume. And the very characteristic smell. Yes, it's It's got to be only one thing. That's bat droppings. It is bat droppings. And one's just getting escaped. it all over. No, no, one's just escaped onto the table there. These are serotine bat droppings. Mm -hmm. And I collected them from an old mill in Hampshire last year with someone with the appropriate license. I hasten to add. Last one then. This one okay. is uh, quite a tricky one. This one, I'm going to hold it up here to see if you can see what that is. What do you think? Yes. Look at the twist on that. See that little spiral on there? perhaps produced as it twisted through the animal's intestine or maybe out of its anus? This is a tricky one because it feels quite different. I know foxes have the ability to kind of produce that spiral in their poo. They the often ends. put a twist in the tail of their poo. Yeah, but their, their fox poo is quite hairy and it doesn't quite look like this. It's no. not as wide but What as about that. the weight of that? This is, is this a real poo? Yes, it's a real I, poo. I know what you've done. What? This is dinosaur poo, isn't no, it? <laughs> pretty close. You've pretty close. Me. It's not technically dinosaur poo, okay. but it is fossilised poo. It's called a coprolite. It's what we call fossilised mm -hmm. poo. And it came from a marine reptile called an ichthyosaur. So this is fossilised poo. Now, top pretty cool. that. Is top. that a challenge? Yes, I like it a is. challenge. I like yes, a challenge. And I will bring you one. I will oh. bring you one. Now, for this, we are going to have to go all the way over to Australia, where there is a very beautiful endemic mammal. I'm, of course, talking about the wombat. It's a beautiful, very, very cute mammal. It's entirely herbivorous. I mean, seriously. OK, they're attractive animals. There are three species left in the world at the moment. One is very endangered, uh, the hairy-nosed wombat. The other two species aren't doing too well. The introduction of non-native animals to Australia wasn't a good thing for them, nor was the loss of habitat, which continues, nor the fact, I've got to tell you, Megs, mm. people used to eat them. Oh, no. No, they did. They used to make wombat stew. Oh, no. And it was really popular. Oh, dear. That's no good, is it? No good at all. No. They're such a, an amazing, unique animal. I don't know why you'd want to put them in a stew, but ecologically speaking, they are simply fascinating. Now, they're a marsupial animal, similar to that of kangaroos, where they carry their young in pouches on their bellies, which just makes them that much cuter. But their poo is also pretty fascinating. Now, you'll be happy to know I have to have Very a happy. fresh batch of wombat poo. What could be finer? Right here. What could be finer? Here we are. Have a look at this, though, because there's something unique about it. So take a look. So I think, do you want to hold that up for well, me? Go on, then, yeah. Hold that up. Have a look at the shape of this poo. It's very characteristic. Look at that. Very surprising. What you might notice there is the definitive edges. Yeah. Because that poo, your eyes aren't deceiving you, that poo is cubed. It's cubed poo. Cubed poo. It is the only animal <laughs> that we know of that produces cubed poo. You're very excited. Oh, aren't look you? at that. You're look very that. excited. Do you know what? This. I've seen wombats. I saw a wombat yeah. once, just glimpsed it, it bolted you? down its burrow. Yeah, they oh, live rather cool. like badgers in extensive burrow systems. And as soon as we spotted it, it ran away. And I didn't think to get out of the car, rush over and see if I could oh, you know, you retrieve any of its poo. And now I've finally got my hands on some cubed poo. Because you're very <laughs> excited about that. Just so good. So, so oh. good.
It's amazing the way that they produce this cubed poo, though. Now, of course, they live in a really hot and dry environment. So their poo is actually incredibly dry. It only contains about 40% water. And if you compare that to humans, we have about 75%. Mm. So they want to extract all the water possible from their feces to live in that dry environment. And they're producing it at quite an alarming rate. I mean, a wombat will produce 80 to 100 cubes of poo a day. 80 to 100 80, a day? They're pumping the cubes out. They certainly are, aren't yeah. they? But Amazing why? stuff. But why? That's the big question. Why cubed? There has to be an ecological reason for it to be cubed and why as well. In How nature, there's it? a reason for everything. Nothing yes. happens by accident. And if it does happen by accident, it doesn't work. It never happens again. So there's always yeah. a reason for it. What's the reason for cubed poo? Well, scientists previously have come up with three hypotheses, right? And I'm going to give them to you now and see what you think of right, these ones. On. The first one is that they have square anuses. Nope. Absolute nope. nonsense. Never seen a square anus in my life. And I've been <laughs> looking. Seriously. I mean, even if it were square, when the poo came out, it would mm-hmm. reform into a pellet shape. Okay. It? So Oval. you don't like that one? No. Okay. The other option is that their pelvic bones, when their poo is pushed through, it forms into a cube yeah, space. But what, when, it, when it gets on the other side of the pelvis, the pelvis isn't right at the mm. anus so when yeah. it got the other side again it would reform into a typical ovoid poo. because it would have to go through a circular anus mm-hmm. very true mm-hmm. okay this is my favorite one the third one okay so the wombats poo a normal spherical shaped fecal deposit but then they turn around and they use their paws to shape it nonsense <laughs> They'd be doing, you said they produced 80 a day. Yes. And they're going to turn around 80 yeah. times a day and pat with their little paws to, to, to make their own. Poo. I mean, they wouldn't have time to do anything else. I love the idea of it. Ecologically, makes zero sense whatsoever. But whoever came up with that hypothesis, put a smile on my face. Nonsense. Well, so we, why then? We, well, we can Come amaze on. you now by telling you that finally, after years of supposition and some nonsense, scientists have actually discovered why wombat poo is cubed. Yes. And it comes down to those intestines. Not only does the food stay in there for two weeks, Megs, it Mm -hmm. also has very long intestines. Now, your average wombat is about a metre in length, but its intestines are 10 metres in length. We've got some bunting here just to show you how long those 10 metre intestines would measure if they were taken out of the wombat. It just keeps going and going. Look at that. And now... You may want to look away because it's a little bit of a gruesome picture, but we do have a photograph of some excised wombat intestines. Here, these have been removed from an animal that was unfortunately hit by a car. And there you can see in the photograph all of the pellets as they move through this long length of intestine. But do look down to the bottom left hand corner of the photograph where you can see that after being round for quite a lot of that process, they suddenly start to become a little bit more cubic. Look up there, number 35, right at the top. It's long, it's not sectioned out, it's kind of, I don't know, a big gloop if you want. And then towards the end, back to number one, you can see where those squares are defined. That's amazing. So to find out how the wombats produce cubic poo, the scientists contacted vets in Tasmania and asked them that if any animals were brought in, perhaps having been hit by cars, that were then unfortunately euthanized, could they have the bodies so they could investigate them? And they did this and took out those intestines. Now, the first thing they did was use a clown party balloon to inflate the intestines so that they could examine its structure more closely. And here you can see a small section of wombat intestine enveloping that yellow balloon. And wrapped around that intestine, that's the brown bit there, you can see these rings with little marks on. And the scientists use those to see how much that particular piece of intestine could expand and contract. And they did this for the whole length of the wombat intestine. And what they found was that certain sections of that intestine were much stronger than others. They took a lot of energy to expand, but then could rapidly contract. And that rapid contraction was what put the first two flat sides on the wombat poo. Then it continued to move through the gut until it got to another really goodness me, I can't, powerful section that rapidly contracted. And that put 
another couple of sides on the wombat poo. These things are clearly not for me. These are made for people with, uh, what should we say, arms that don't look like this. <laughs> so it's by passing through these relatively different parts of intestine that the wombat poo is turned into a cube. But you've got to take a look at this. This is a CT scan of a wombat laying on its belly, looking from the back to the front. And there you can see in the middle the poo moving through its gut. And if you want to believe it, you can even see that it's slightly cubed. Now, what about that? I love it when scientists have access to this sort of technology to answer these sorts of questions. You know, I didn't realise what I was missing from my life until this moment. It's just great. I was missing the cross section of our wombat intestinal system yeah. with cubed poo. I mean, it's what dreams are made of. Well, it is it, it, it is what dreams yeah. are made of. You know, when I was first learning about wombats age six, all those years ago, I never yeah. dreamed that I'd see that. And that's what it's all about. It's about the relative strengths of parts of that intestine to squeeze the poo into these cubes. And of course, because mm. as you say, Megs, it's pretty dry. Once it's squeezed like that, it doesn't sort of go ovoid again because it's not squidgy. Not squidgy. It's, much, it's much drier than most animals' poo. What about that? How many contractions? Job then? done, as they say. It is good. Well, almost. How many contractions do you think it takes in the intestine for it to produce that cube? Uh, I don't know. Tell me. 40,000 40, 40, contractions. contractions for it to get it's it working shape, hard isn't it it's yeah. working hard to get the cube to poo. there's a lot of energy in that and of course animals don't expend energy and do things for no reason there's got to be a good reason for having cubed poo now think of the habitat in which wombats live they live in quite rocky environments sometimes up quite high and animals don't just poo anywhere no. they poo in very strategic places because their poo contains a lot of information often poo is coated in certain scents whether that be hormones pheromones that are then released into the wind to communicate with other individuals within that population or even other species now cubes are very good in terms of a shape to stay in one place now have a look at this photograph this is a pile of wombat poo on a rocky outcrop imagine mm. that Okay, so there's the poo, right? You, yeah. you, you'd be the rock there. Right now, imagine I'm another wombat and I'm coming along and I'm accidentally knocking your poo, or your own wombat knocking your poo. It doesn't yeah. roll because it's cubic. Look, exactly. it's really hard to, if that were round, that would have rolled off of your palm. But it's not rolling because it's got those flat sides, you see? It's exactly. doing a great job of staying in the right place. Exactly. It means the message isn't going to move anywhere and all that information is going to be delivered, whether you're a wombat that's looking for a mate, whether you're a wombat that's just letting everyone know of your own territory. That message is staying in one spot and not rolling off of that log. So log. that's why they go to all of that trouble with their intestines, mm -hmm. so that the poo doesn't roll away and they can communicate effectively. Well, that's what we think. The okay. speculation, but okay. probably. Yeah. This cubic poo has rocketed into my excrement charts at number one. Oh, wow. That's Fantastic a big thing. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. We hope it's amazed you too. If you see anything else that amazes you, do let us know. We might feature it in one of our broadcasts. But until next time, that's goodbye from us. And I've got to tell you, Megs, next time we're going to have to work really hard I to know. trump cute. I don't know how we're going to do it. Oh, so, so, so good.